Now to a still developing story we've been following all week. The officer involved deadly shooting in Springfield this past Sunday. The city's police commissioner now addressing serious allegations made by family members of the man who was killed after they viewed police body cam video. Western Mass News reporter Briseida Landa Verde joins us live in studio with the latest. Briseida. Yeah, well, Matt, the family of Orlando Taylor III says he was murdered at the hands of Springfield police. Now, earlier today, I spoke with the Springfield Police Commissioner, Cheryl Claproot, who is sticking to her initial comments following the incident, saying the shooting was justifiable. Orlando Taylor III, we will have policies with his name on it that no another African-American walking the streets of Springfield Thank you, Lord. Will ever, ever get murdered again. On Thursday, emotions ran high for the family of Orlando Taylor III after viewing police body cam footage from Sunday morning. When the grandmother cried out, stop, do not kill my grandson, the officer didn't stop because he wasn't trained to stop. He didn't know where to call for a crisis situation. Minister Charles Stokes, speaking on behalf of Orlando's family, says the 23-year-old was murdered at the hands of Springfield police during Sunday's officer-involved shooting. The Springfield Police Department responding to these claims made by the family. Police Commissioner Cheryl Claproot telling Western Mass News on Friday she is sticking with her initial comments following the incident on Sunday. In my eyes, what I've seen, it's, it's a justifiable act. It's how we were trained. Um, and again, we, we don't want it to end up this way, but um, it's our jobs to protect life and property and limb and our own lives. And um, he had stabbed the officer once um, in the face and he was bleeding profusely and, and uh, we're not trained to give him a second chance. Commissioner Claproot says she is saddened and disappointed about the one-sided narrative being portrayed by Orlando's family, but is confident the facts will come to light. Sometimes, no matter what people see, your, your emotions and, and where you're coming from take over, and it can block out the facts. And the body-worn camera program was meant to give you the facts, the truth of the situation, to be transparent, um, so that we build trust. The police department is waiting for direction from the Hamden District Attorney's Office to release the video to the public. We do have um, it prepared where we have a clip uh, showing the body-worn camera, the ring video, and uh, the call that we went on, the 9-11 call, the voice, and, and we can show you all of that. And uh, we are prepared to show it to you with the officers' faces blurred out. Now, a spokesperson from the DA's office tells us once the investigation is complete, a public presentation of the findings will be made available. A date for when that will take place has not yet been announced at this time. Meanwhile, the city solicitor has also reached out to the DA's office requesting the video be made public. He says, in part, the mayor and commissioner again request that the office of the district attorney release the body-worn camera footage to the public as soon as possible and in accord with local policies and procedures adopted when the body-worn camera program was implemented. Now, coming up at 6, we have more on the initial 911 call that was made on Sunday morning. For now, reporting in studio, Priscilla Landa Verde, Western Mass News.